All right, let's bring in Brian Stelter, CNN senior media correspondent and the host, of course, of Reliable Sources, and David Gartenstein Ross, senior fellow with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Gentlemen, thank you. Thanks. Uh, let's start off with this, Brian. Right move, or is there, you know, is there more information on this threat that makes this okay for Sony to kind of concede here? I think this has a very chilling effect, Chris. We are effectively, as a country, letting foreign hackers, anonymous hackers, maybe a bunch of punks in front of computer screens in the middle of nowhere, determine what movies can be shown in American theaters. This is very troubling, and I think it has freedom of expression issues down the line beyond just this one silly movie. But sometimes we have, David, what they call actionable intelligence, right, where there is a real threat. Uh, and, of course, there's this other phase, which was Sony was pushing the don't enable hackers uh, by reporting on hacked emails angle. But now, what is more enabling than conceding to their threats? Absolutely. And I highly doubt that there's actually actionable intelligence indicating that there'd be a huge threat against movie theaters. Uh, if you look at uh, very competent terrorist groups, they've been making threats against the United States for a long time, and we haven't let that deter activities at home. Uh, I think there, there's another angle, there's something else that may be going on, which is we're looking just at the threats that have been made publicly. There could be some private threats, some blackmail, or something else that they're threatening to do behind the scenes that's causing this backtracking by uh, Sony and some others. But it's a very disturbing situation. This is essentially a heckler's veto, and Brian is exactly right about a that. heckler's veto. That mm. is a, a very strong phrase for this. I want to get back to that in one second, but let's shift focus to Rogan and Franco, yeah. okay? Yeah. Now they're not going to do any media, they just said, but they've been out there, right? And they've been saying, oh, don't go after people's private emails. This is wrong, the report on this. But now, aren't they arguably subverting the First Amendment right, the freedom of expression, which has been in movies that were seen as controversial since movies began. Well, if we could see the emails right now between Seth Rogen and James Franco in the studio, I bet we would be seeing them saying, do not let these hackers win. Do not let this movie be pulled from But theaters. they're saying they won't Ultimately, do media? Though, well, well, right. Well, I think that was a decision made. Every question they would get from the interviewers was about, was about this kind of threat. Um, but Sony, you know, at least has some options here. Theater, theater owners might decide uh, to, to pull this movie from their Christmas Day slate. But Sony could also release it online. They could also make it available video, video on demand. You could maybe pay $10 and watch it at home. But it's all week. versions of the same move. And yes, I, I, and I yes. do think, you know, when you take on a project like this, as a Rogan or a Franco. And look, I get that it's a silly movie, probably won't even be well reviewed. But the point is, if you want to take it on, then own it. And if you want to come out and start talking about the media's responsibility, think about your own as an yeah, artist of the First Amendment. I think they are. I mean, I think they probably got handcuffed by Sony yesterday. I think they probably want to do press and don't feel like they can. But these decisions all matter. Now, you they said do. something, David, that we have to follow up on, okay? Uh, a heckler's veto, all right? We have to think very seriously about how, as a state, as a sovereign, you deal with hacking. Because let me tell you, if somebody connected to North Korea had broken into Sony's headquarters and stolen their file cabinet, you would be hearing from the U.S. government all over the place about this. But we're really not hearing mm. much. Where is the U.S. government on this? Well, now that you have this latest threat being made, uh, the U.S. government has a lot more opportunity uh, to um, actually uh, in intervene and uh, take a part in this. But I think that um, actually we should have a conversation about uh, how much the U.S. government should be involved. I think it should be because essentially what you have, it seems, is a foreign power uh, engaging in a cyber attack against a private actor, a private company, in order to squelch freedom of expression. And I should note that this is not the first time that's happened in recent, uh, in, in recent months. You, you could argue it doesn't get enough attention, that if you do something to bricks and mortar, you do mm -hmm. something to the real world, uh, everybody takes it maybe too seriously. But if you do it online, they don't. But here's the big question, Brian, I'll give it to you, is, well, okay, let's say the U.S. does come out. Let's say they do connect it to North Korea. Now what are you going to do? Right, and I don't think they want to answer those questions. I think that's why yesterday the State Department spokeswoman said, this is just a comedic movie, it's not a documentary, so the government's not taking a position on it. Yeah, and remember, it, there was a German movie about uh, President George W. Bush getting assassinated. Right. that's right. Nothing like this happened. No, it was it because was... we didn't have the capabilities of hacking, or do you think there's been a shift, or this is North there Korea? There was widespread condemnation of that film. It wasn't nearly as high profile, and we are in a different environment now. Every year, it feels like the world gets smaller and gets more connected. That makes me concerned, not just about movies with North Korea plot lines, but what about plot lines involving China, or any other country that might object to some American comedy in the future? Mm. Uh, one other point, David. You know, after Aurora, Colorado, okay, uh, The Dark Knight, uh, you know, and it was pulled from a lot of places, right? They shifted the release date on it. They changed their plan. But that was about tone 
and about respect for the violence that had just occurred. This is a very different situation. This is a capitulation, isn't it? This is. It's, it's absolutely a capitulation. And with the example you were giving of uh, the German film showing the assassination of George W. Bush, you know, one of the reasons why they didn't have to fear a U.S. cyber attack is because we don't do that in response to films that are mocking our politicians. Mm. Uh, having a world in which only uh, the politicians of democratic states can be mocked, whereas uh, those of, of states that engage in this kind of unethical behavior are beyond reproach because people are afraid of them, is a very dangerous world to be in. So today, theater owners can decide. They can decide whether to be crippled by this, whether to be terrorized by this, is it right or whether to, put to it have them? a backbone. Is it right to put it on them? I, I, look, I think it is I on I get them the today. responsibility, but do you don't think it should start at the top? I think Sony has, you know, has indicated, yeah, if you all want to pull the theater, uh, the, the movie from theaters, we understand. Ultimately, it is up to the theater owners to do that. And then the question becomes, will Sony put it online and let you pay a few bucks to watch it? And what I wonder about that is, let's say it's on your Comcast video on demand system next week. Will the Comcast of the world then be concerned about being hacked as well? Well, look, that's what happens. Once you give a threat power, right now, now it, it becomes uh, somehow more realistic. We're also going to have to see how this plays out politically. I wonder if the White House is holding off on this situation because of what came out in those emails. I wonder if they're not taking as much ownership of the situation, but that's just my speculation. David, thank you very much. Brian, appreciate Thanks. it this morning.